Heart of Stone On June 3, 2023, the Holy Spirit spoke to me through Jeremiah 26, 2b to 3a. Tell them everything I command you. Do not omit a word. Perhaps they will listen and each will turn from his evil way. I read the full chapter of Jeremiah 26. Although it concerns the prophecy about the destruction of the city of Jerusalem and the temple, the part that struck me was the portion specific to the temple. The Israelites had a strong attachment to this temple. As a consequence, they did not accept Jeremiah speaking against it. To them, that was one of their idols. In the word, when he talks about the temple, we must understand that spiritually it is referring to our bodies as the temples of the Holy Spirit, our hearts that host Yeshua's presence. Nowadays, people have made their hearts their idol by saying or implying that whatever is in their heart is good, that Yah knows their heart, that they are following their heart. But Yah is making a point to say that that's not necessarily true. Oftentimes, man's heart is hardened because of pride. Such was the case of Pharaoh. Exodus 5.2 Pharaoh said, Who is Yah that I should obey him and let Israel go? I do not know Yah and I will not let Israel go. When judgments or plagues strike, Man has two options, one to fall on his face before a holy Elohim and repent of his evil doing, two to harden his heart, raise his fists and curse Yah. The latter is a perfect example of a heart of stone. See what Deuteronomy 8, 2 to 3 says, Remember how Yah your Elohim led you all the way in the wilderness these forty years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart whether or not you would keep his commands he humbled you causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna which neither you nor your ancestors had known to teach you that man does not live on bread alone but on every word that comes from the mouth of Yah on my channel, the topic of repentance has been brought up many times. Again, I will say that it is vital that we examine ourselves and ensure our hearts are aligned with Father's. Ask yourself, am I living in obedience with His Word, or am I following the crowd, my carnal desires? Yah has said that no one will be spared from judgment. If you have a Bible in your possession, claim to read it and to have the Holy Spirit, then you have no excuse for not doing what it says. Proverbs 16.5 Yah detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this, they will not go unpunished. Proverbs 21.4 Haughty eyes and a proud heart, the lamp of the wicked are sin. Jeremiah 17, 9 The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Thus Yah said, Reform your ways. At this point, Father instructed me to read the scriptures he would give me from the NIV version as opposed to the King James version. He said, Read it in the NIV so that people can understand it in plain English and not misunderstand it. Verse 13 Now reform your ways and your actions and obey Yah your Elohim. I was further instructed to omit the second half of verse 13 where it says, Then Yah will relent and not bring the disaster He has pronounced against you. I was also instructed to omit the second half of verse 3, which says, Then I will relent and not bring on them the disaster I was planning because of the evil ways they have done. 
he said that he's going to bring disaster on all people to test their hearts. He said, there is a testing of the faith that is coming that cannot be avoided, averted, overturned. All hearts will be tested, especially those who claim to be mine. I'm sitting here in my secret place and dreading bringing forth this new message. I can sense that Yah is very angry. His anger cannot be quenched. The Holy Spirit brought to mind the following scripture found in Isaiah 5:25, 9:12, 17:21, 17:21, 10:4, which says, For all this his anger is not turned away. His hand is still appraised. Next, my attention was turned to the persecution of his true servants. First, Jeremiah's, where his enemies, which were no other than his own people, wanted to kill him. They put him in a cistern. They bound him in stalks. They called him false. Then the Holy Spirit flipped me to Acts 5, which involves the persecution of Peter and other apostles for doing miracles in Yeshua's name. In this case, they were jailed, then told not to teach in his name. But Peter boldly answered that they will obey Yah instead of men. Here is Peter's testimony. Acts 5, 30-32 The Elohim of our fathers raised Yeshua from the dead, whom you have killed by hanging him on a tree. Elohim exalted him as prince and savior, that he might give repentance and forgiveness of sins to Israel. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom Elohim has given to those who obey him. Verse 33, when they heard this, talking about the high priest, they were furious and wanted to put them to death like Jeremiah. Notice the interesting parallels between Act 5 and Jeremiah 26 on how some parties wanted both the apostles and Jeremiah dead, but someone rose up in each of the stories and came to their defenses, sparing their lives. Those who are Father's true servants expect ridicule, mocking, disregard, loss of friends, persecution, hatred. Be comforted that regardless of the difficulties, no one will be able to stop our missions to divulge his word and bring in his end time harvest. Acts 5:38b to 39 If their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from Elohim, you will not be able to stop these men you will only find yourself fighting against Elohim. Next, I was given Job 21, verses 7 to 9, 11 to 14, and 16. Why do the wicked live on growing old and increasing in power? They see their children established around them, their offspring before their eyes. Their homes are safe and free from fear, the rod of Elohim is not upon them. They send forth their children as a flock. Their little ones dance about. They sing to the music of the tambourine and harp. They make merry to the sound of the flute. They spend years in prosperity and go down to the grave in peace. Yet they say to Elohim, and I put in bracket with their, bra with their actions, because their lips are claiming otherwise. Leave us alone. We have no desire to know your ways. Who is the Almighty that we should serve him? What would we gain by praying to him? But their prosperity is not in their own hands, so I stand aloof from the counsel of the wicked. Please note that the wicked are not only the Satanists, the atheists, those who have openly denounced Yeshua as their savior. This group of wicked may very well include those who worship Father with their lips only, 
and whose hearts are far from him, the lukewarm who will be vomited from his mouth, those walking along the white path who will be left outside the door, and those who do not follow Yeshua's commands, who do not really love him, neither is the love of the Father in them. Oftentimes our idolatry is what stands in our way of being able to discern the path we are on. No wonder the Holy Spirit highlighted to me the next commandment next. Deuteronomy 5.8 You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. The Holy Spirit ministered to me that during end times, this verse will take new shape as people will worship aliens, demons, and fallen angels who will appear to have supernatural powers just like the characters in their favorite Avengers series. Man loves power. Who does not watch those movies and wish to have their powers and fame? Man will fall even those who claim to know Yah, to love Yah. They will chase after these things, after the desires of their wicked hearts, and they will mingle with the wolverines, wonder women. Rima, watch now that you are not deceived. You have been told before it happens. Do not worship these beings. Do not give them any place in your hearts. Do not mingle with them, for Yah is jealous and will punish this as idolatry and adultery. Then the Holy Spirit gave me a new understanding of His Ten Commandments, for they will encompass new meanings in end times, as Satan unleashes a new level of wickedness. 1. Man will love himself and others, whether human or not, above the Creator. 2. Man will worship, bow down his heart to others, whether human or not, including the Antichrist and his false prophet. People will have greater regard for people's opinions rather than Yah's. 3. Man will continue to misuse Yah's name, blaspheming it continually in perverted conversations, musics, music, schools, everywhere. 4. Man will call the Sabbath unholy. He will profane it, replacing it with work, work, and more work. His heart's desire will be to own more, bigger, and better. His cravings to own more properties, more wealth, more friendships, more knowledge will not be satisfied. Even those who claim their Sundays as their day, excuse me, as their rest day, still work, go shopping, and put others to work. A complete disregard to what Yah says in His Word. As a consequence, they will not enter Yah's rest. 5. Children will hate their parents, disobey them, even calling the authorities on them. 6. Violence will greatly increase. Man will murder his own species, side with demons and fallen angels. Lawlessness and perversion will abound. Evil will prevail over good. 7. Mankind will commit indecent acts, not only with those of the same sex, but also with beasts and aliens. The book of Leviticus will suddenly become more relevant. 8. Identity theft stealing of private property will increase with lawlessness. Personal property will be confiscated from those who will not be abide by the beast's rules. 9. Deception and lies will prevail over the truth. There will be more people calling good evil than the other way around. Satan will turn this world upside down. People will lie about each other through their teeth to save their own skin. They will report each other when snitching will be profusely rewarded. People will sell each other out. 10. Men will take their peers, wives, husbands, property, animals. They will be lovers of themselves. 
war, famine, plagues, and utter destruction will greatly push men to plunder his neighbor. While writing my notes on number nine, I sensed a deep darkness blanketing the earth. Then I saw these verses. Verse 22, Out of deep darkness Yah spoke. And verse 23, The voice came out of the darkness. Deuteronomy 5.29 Oh, that their hearts would be inclined to fear me and keep all my commands always so that it may go well with them and their children forever. Vision I saw these young unbelievers' hearts as plants and thriving, blossoming due to the quote-unquote watering that people did to them as they encouraged them to follow their evil desires, forsaking Yah. I saw the hearts of those young ones flourishing when hearing comments that tickle their ears and encouragement on their relationships with those Yah did not choose for them. The people doing the watering or encouraging the young were supposed to be believers, but they had no spiritual discernment. No distinction was found between them and unbelievers. Brothers and sisters, it has been a while now that Yah has been putting me through some really heartbreaking situations. I've spent much time grieving over the souls who have turned away from His grace and those who lend a deaf ear to His teachings. These circumstances would not lighten up. I felt such a pressing and crushing in my spirit. When I inquired of him why I was experiencing such heavy crushing, I realized that he was causing me to experience things in real life the way he's experiencing with his, his people. Through my heartbreak, I was able to feel his pain, sympathize with him. As such, I've gained a new appreciation for Father's mercy love and compassion and I've come to accept whatever he brings my way for the sake of showing his glory so I choose to persevere in praising glorifying and honoring him for he alone is worthy father always has a way to reach me with his word cutting right to my heart as my consolation he directed me to Job 23 verses 1 to 2 10 to 12 and 17. Then Job replied, Even today my complaint is bitter. His hand is heavy in spite of my groanings. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. My feet have closely followed his steps. I have kept to his way without turning aside. I have not departed from the commands of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. Yet I am not silenced by the darkness, by the thick darkness that covers my face. Rima, prepare your hearts for what must be. The deception must increase. People will be made to choose, and many will choose wrong, and yet believe they pick right. The separation of the wheat and the tares is at hand. Watch and see what I will do. The tares have grown tall, and it's now easier to see clearly those I will cut off with one sweep, with one sweep of my hand. My righteous will remain standing in their fields, ready, armored up, to bring in my harvest. June 6, 2023 my husband and I were outside working our way in our backyard. I was bu busy removing weeds while my husband tilled the ground. When he came over to me with a grin on his face and said, I have a heart of stone. I turned around to see him holding up a stone he had dug up from our lawn that was sure enough shaped like a heart. I immediately knew this was a sign from father. When I started typing up this transcript on June 7, 2023, and I asked Father what its title was going to be. I heard in my spirit, Heart of Stone. Now that stone makes up the thumbnail for this word. 
to finish off this evening, I was reminded of an amazing scripture found in Ezekiel 36 that relates to the heart of stone. I pulled it up and read through the chapter. My heart leaped for joy and exhilaration at Father's truly amazing grace and never-ending mercy. This chapter talks about how his people Israel had abandoned him and grieved his heart so much that he caused them to be scattered throughout the earth. They profaned his name. But after some time, he promised that for the sake of his name, he would regather them from the four corners of the earth, remove their hearts of stone and give them a heart of flesh, that he would put his spirit in their hearts and be their Elohim. Brothers and sisters, so far my ministry has been focused mostly on reaching those who profess to be Christians, whether living in covenant with him or not. I cannot begin to tell you how grieved Father is over those of you who continue to live a sinful life and claim the opposite. The measuring stick or plumb line you need to be aware of and by which Yah will judge is his word. Please familiarize yourself with his teachings. Sometimes I feel like I'm repeating myself on this channel over and over again. I hope and pray I may reach some of you. This evening I have great news for those who will repent and eventually become part of this regathering the Bible talks about. Yes, because although many claim that this prophecy has already occurred in 1948, when Israel became a nation, that is not true. I've already covered all the particulars the Holy Spirit gave me on that. If you have missed it, please have a listen to the word entitled, One of the Biggest Lies Ever Told, The Battle of Gog and Magog. Link below or in the description box. This makes up another reason why it's so important to read and understand the Old Testament through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, for he is the author of the word and the best teacher we could have. Do not take others' words over his. If in doubt, by all means, take it to earnest prayer and wait upon him for confirmation. I am excited to share that this regathering is coming and that some of you will partake in this event that Yah will inde indeed forgive you of all your trespasses, remove your heart of stone, and give you a heart of flesh. Let me read the full scripture to you. Ezekiel 36 verses 24 to 28 For I will take you out of the nations, I will gather you from all the countries, and bring you back into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and will put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. You will live in the land I gave your forefathers. You will be my people, and I will be your Elohim.